have a husband like that, don't deny him sex. Because if you deny him sex, you are invariably sending him away. But what you do is prepare yourself like a, 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 a bride for the groom. Prepare yourself and then wait for him. Give him. If a man doesn't give a woman chop money, feeding allowance, right. can that affect the performance in the bedroom? Yes, it, it, it does. And to a very, very large extent, it does. If for a brief moment of mm. hardship, mm. he cannot perform his husband duties or his manly duties, that's understandable. But if it is his nature that he mm. doesn't give, he doesn't do anything, and then I, mm. I take care of the house, take care of the kids, take care pay of Pay school me. fees, pay, school pay fees, rent. Pay food. I mean, pay for food mm. or, you know, put food, put on, food the on the table. Put food on the table. Naturally, I'm not an excited woman. Wow. Naturally, I'm not a happy woman. Wow. Because all the things that a girl could use her money for, I'm denied them so that I could take care mm. of everything. It's one thing if I was a single mother. Mm. If it's one thing, I mean, it's one thing if I wasn't married. Mm -hmm. But now that I am married, there is that mutual consent that you are in my life to help me. Mm. You're not in my life to be one of the boys. You're not in my life to be one of my, 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 my kids. That is why you came to take me from my father's house. I didn't come to take you from your father's house. You came. that comes my way only in you i live i move and i have my being i surrender my will to yours make me who i am and you oh christ i can do all things it doesn't matter if the enemy tries to harm me there's no weapon form will be able to prosper Place of destiny. But then I acknowledge stood naked in humility. Now I clearly see without you there's no me. Oh, 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 oh. Christ, I can do all this. Really doesn't matter if the end of me tries to harm me. There's no weapon form. We'll be able to prosper. I'll let my light so shine. So everyone can see now. Come on. Yeah, yeah. Oh, 
gets to that point where it becomes emotional. Like I said, if it's for a brief moment, that's right. It's understandable. Yeah. But when it is the status quo, it gets to a point. It becomes very. The, the, the woman becomes a bit emotional about mm. it, and naturally she's upset. Mm. It naturally affects her response exactly, to you sexually. Exactly. And if it becomes a burden mm. to the point that mm. she's actually not doing it because mm. yes, let's say my husband is not probably forthcoming with all these things, mm. but don't worry, I can sort it out. Don't mm. worry, he can just be one of the boys. I'll, I'll take care of him. But I'll even extend it to his parents if that's what he wants. I mean, I am so well. Oh, but every man has an ego. Thank you. So very if much. you if you just if you allow, allow exactly, that, and that's, and, and that's that's the that's the shameful aspect that for a man to so allow himself to appear that you know it's like you can't be bothered, and your ego is thrown somewhere mm. through the window, and you still can't be bothered. The woman does everything, and you dress, then go around, and the, the, you know getting all the greetings and everything. I see if you are doing something in the house. Naturally, you you, you are the kind of person who becomes very annoying. Wow. Exactly. So your wife is not even emotionally in tune with That's you. That's it. If, even even with, with the Christianity bit of it, it it's yes. frustrating. Yes. Let me, let, me, let me even say this. Sometimes it is not a man's ability to provide that makes him a man. It is how he communicates his inability that earns him a lot of respect from say his wife. Say that again. Yes. It is not a man's ability to provide that makes him the man. But it's how he communicates, communicates his inability. Wow. You constantly let wow. your wife appreciate the fact that it's not like you are pretending. Wow. It's not like you are pretending you are the boss wow. and you don't see what is going on. Sweetheart, you know I don't have. Mm. I, please do this. For, for a me. woman, she can it's, go the extra exactly, mile if she hears this. Exactly. Oh, sweetheart, you know, I know mm. for, for, for the oh. past three years that we married, the honest truth is you earn more than I earn. If I pay, the bills, there is nothing left. I know, I don't even give you salary, uh, um, um, monthly allowance. I know, you take care of the kids. And it's not like I'm excited about it. I wish I could change our situation, but I can't. One day, I'm hoping God will turn our fortunes, and I'm going to pay back everything that I've made you endure. Any woman hears these things and would want to it's go there. It's encouraging you. It's encouraging. But some men are like, they are the dons. Eh, but you know, After all, you know mm. I don't have the money. What can you do? What, what do you want me to do? These are the same men who know how to keep women in abusive relationships for over five years because they know exactly what to say to make the woman always stay with them. They will beat the woman, cheat on the woman, but they know exactly where to press and then the woman will stay. So how come when they marry, they change? Because you see, I understand. There are, in fact, there are times sometimes, it's not like you can't probably even give. Maybe you can give, but maybe there's opportunity mm. cost to the giving. Mm. You know there is something we need to do. The woman is just being a woman. Oh, let's do this, let's do this. You know these ones are not important. They're not important. They're important things that we need to do for the family. But you know when once you bring in, because she doesn't side with you, she'll be offended. So you can just find a nice story and tell her so that she sorts this one out. Why do you save the money for something else? It's all about communication and how we say it. But just, no, 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 we can't do this. This is rubbish. You can't do this. No, that's very offensive. You understand? And if genuinely you can't provide, you don't have to be quiet about it. You don't have to be moody about it. We keep saying, um, I know somebody who tells me that, you see, we are different people and then we all respond to issues differently. And I tell them, marriage is one. We don't have your marriage and we don't have my marriage. If you say you are going to allow your individuality to come in between your marriage, it will collapse. Because everybody who is doing good or bad in their marriage is doing it based on their individuality. But the marriages are failing. So if a marriage will stand, it is not about your way of doing it or my way of doing it. It is the way of doing it. And the way of doing it is one way. Mm. How to marry. That's right. There is nothing but you like, know the like, person who has the manual? It's God. It's, it's God. God. And, and exactly. you can't run away from you God and cannot. expect to have a good marriage. Exactly. It doesn't just work like that. Yeah. Let's come back to a place where we put God at the center of our marriages. To be sincere with you, because the fear of the Lord, the Bible says, is the, the beginning, beginning of, wisdom. of wisdom. PJ, I am, I'm getting really, really, really excited in my spirit because I believe somebody's learning something. Right. The truth of the matter is that every man needs to come to a place where they become the dawn. Done not just by manipulating and yeah, oppressing, of but by lovingly bringing the woman so close and appreciating little effort that the woman makes. Yes. Even if you cannot, you know, call the shot completely all by yourself. Because it will affect the bedroom. And every man is wired to enjoy the bedroom. You can expect the bedmatics to be at such great levels when the kitchenmatics 
and the communication matrix does not really synchronize yeah. or it's not properly synchronized. Yeah. What will make you not give your wife good sex? Okay, um, there could be um, a lot of factors. Uh, one can be exogenous to the two of us. So in this case, we are looking at work, we are looking at stress, we are looking at anticipation of something that I dread, so I am not even emotionally in tune with, with anything of that nature. I'm thinking about something else. I'm mm -hmm. under a lot of pressure. I'm under a lot of stress. Naturally, you are not, you know, there. You are not there naturally, you know. Like your mind is on something else. So that's one. It could even be probably that you are fasting because you are anticipating something from God. And where you are not in terms of spirituality, but in terms of the anticipation. Mm. And then the first thing that has come, in fact, sex is the last thing on your mind that if you are not careful and your wife push, probably, probably even turn a fight or something. So these things, that is outside your That's control. for the godly man. Yes. Outside your control mm. can affect the quality of sex. Mm. And when a man is under a lot of stress, it even affects the quality of his erection. It affects the time that he can go. Long, yeah. and exactly. Mm. So it's it, it, it one. Then the other thing can also be from my side, where probably I am angry at her for something that she's done, which she could know, or which she could be aware of, or which she could not be aware of. It could also be that probably I'm sleeping with someone else, and so that's affecting um, 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 my bond with her. Or probably I have done it with somebody, and I'm feel, feeling guilty. And so whenever I am mm. with her, I am condemning myself and the pressure, the guilt, and everything is on me, so I can't give her my best. Then we're also looking at the point where it is from her part, where um, we could pick up um, issues like what we talked about earlier on hygiene and then everything, or it could be that probably I'm having problems with um, the meeting of mind on so many fronts. I don't find her respectful, or she doesn't respect me, she doesn't respect my opinion, and I realize that consistently we are always arguing. Consistently we are always fighting. We don't seem to have a compromise. Even when I'm trying my best to compromise as a man, my wife is in an entrenched position. When we are together, I don't feel emotionally synchronized. And it's like when I want to have sex, then probably I'm trying to please myself. Or probably I just want to do it because, yeah, I don't want her to probably also cheat. I don't want the marriage to probably go out, I mean, become something bad. Hold your thoughts because we are going to hit the street. And then sample opinion on this topic that we had been looking at, sex in marriage. Well, let's hit the streets and hear people's opinion on this and we'll be right back. I believe it is lack of education on the part of other men. Wise others, it is the desire and the urge to sleep with their women, to sleep with their wife, whether they are ready or not. I think that sex in marriage is such a crucial aspect of marriage, we can't relegate it to the background. We try to relegate it to the background. It is signing on to total defeat in marriage. And it must be taken seriously. However, it must be looked at with a divine eye. In as much as sex is for pleasure, God gave sex. And so sex should be seen and done the God way. You are welcome back. Yes, sex in marriage is what we're looking at. You've heard the respondents, you've heard their opinion. PG, is it possible for a man to stay without sex for a while? Because most women think that men can do without sex, so they use the sex to punish their husbands. Oh, it's possible. Sure. It is, it is possible, and immediately you have a problem with your husband once, twice, maybe it's a persistent issue that keeps coming up. Every now and then it keeps up coming up, coming up in diverse forms and different ways, but it's all pointing to a particular cardinal problem that is with you and then eventually you see that he's moved out of the bedroom. Probably he says, oh, mm -hmm. um, you know what, let me just sleep in the visitor's room. Or he starts watching TV and staying way longer and then you always have to go to the bedroom, uh, the hall, then wake him up to come and sleep and you tell you, okay, I'm coming, you take the lead, I'm coming. And then you find him sleeping there in the morning. There are things on the, uh, buried on the ground that he's trying to shy away from addressing. Sadly. So they realize that he's drifting away from you mm. gradually. He's drifting away from you gradually. And then, yes, so it gets to a point where you realize that he, he, he doesn't come across as that person who's always running after you or who used to run after you. And whenever you are interested or whenever you are in the mood to want to have that kind of relationship with him, he drags his feet. And when he does it, it's like quickly 
there isn't much foreplay, there isn't much drive. Once he's done, he's, he's shut down. He's, he's, I, and then I, the time, the time he just completes. I don't, I don't want us to look like just coming to highlight the problems. Yes. Because the whole essence of families together is bringing families to a healthy position where God can be exalted. Right. Yes, all these issues are there. Let me just chip in this. You just mentioned something that is very, very key. I have spoken to a couple of married women and married men. I have a WhatsApp group for married couples. And sometimes we talk about it, we talk about sex in marriage. And one thing that we all sometimes agree on is the fact that you really sometimes don't even have to have actual penetration for sex to take place. Bless you. People can have an hour for play and join each other, everything, and then they are satisfied. So they just probably do the actual penetration and just once, and then they are okay. Rather than somebody being on you two, three, four, five rounds, and then you still leave very empty because there isn't any emotional connect uh, connectivity. Initially, I talked about sex as opposed to love making. Yeah. So when it is love making, that is when all the senses are involved yeah. the touch, the smell. Everything involved, and at the end of the day, it's a beautiful package. It's a beautiful package, as opposed to just jumping on me, mm. entering me, and then mm. coming out. Mm. Oh yeah, it's been amazing, and I know that you had been weeping over the years. Some of you, you had been wounded, both male and female, married men and women. There had been disrespect. Some of you were greenhorns, very spiritual very spiritual so you don't even want any adventure and you are married to people who want to you know uh, at least try out a few things don't be too strict within the confines of marriage please open up talk more explore more don't use pornography allow god give you wisdom find out the things that make sense to both of you within the context of your marriage. What works for me, you know, in my marriage regarding sex may not be what will work for you, but find out what works for the two of you. Hygiene is paramount. Respect is paramount. Mutual respect, not one-sided respect. And sex also should be in a, in a place where there is a level of privacy. Sex in marriage. There are some who just don't care. The door may be open. And some bring children into the bedroom. Do you sleep with the children age, ages zero till even five? You don't do that. And assume that the children are sleeping. Some of them are sleeping with one eye closed and the other one open. I wish we had a whole year to talk about this. Because there are so many lapses. But it's not just coming to, you know, expand on the lapses. It's coming to a place of, you know, saying these Preferring solutions because we want healthy marriages and sex is pivotal. Right. I want to give you one minute to summarize. Uh, what I would say, Mama Kathy, is that sex is a beautiful thing. It is something that we should all encourage in marriage. And we should all explore godly and decent ways. We should all explore each other. Mm. There are mm. people who mm. don't know much about their partners sexually. And their partners, there are some people who don't know much about themselves sexually together explore explore there are no limits there are no boundaries once you are doing what is god for as long as you have the license exactly you That's have what I mean. married exactly you yeah. are married you try to explore each other you try to find out which part on, on 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 each other's body they are most sensitive to and then everything and then you move on from there there there, there should be a lot of you know um, consensus building a lot of mutual compromises and then everything so that you get the best out of your marriage. Mm. When you are angry, you try not to sleep over it. You try to trash it out. Say it in a loving way and in a nice way. One thing that I never said, I want to say it then, do not try to resolve conflict with sex. Some women, after they've disrespected their husbands and knowing that their husbands are very, very much awake and alive to their charm, quickly would want to charm the men so that the men then sleep with them and then they forget about the issue. Some men, knowing very well that their women cannot resist their touch after they've disrespected and abused their women, would want to cover it up with sex. That is a problem. Abuse. You just cover the top. At the end of the day, the undertow, the fundamental issues are never resolved. You solve your marital problems. Talk about it. Sure. Deal with it. Deal with it. And the two of you tell each other we forgot. 
forgiving each other. So it is after you have forgiven each other that you prove that indeed you are forgiving each other by probably patching it up with a good love making. But you don't subdue the problem with sex. Don't bury it under the carpet because yeah. one day the carpet comes up. will be overloaded. It's interesting that all these are coming out. The system we live in is degenerating by the day. Values and morals are being thrown into the gutters. Marriage is becoming something that most people are not really interested in. The younger generation are disillusioned about it. But you see, as I bring a closure to this episode, I want to read out a few things that came on A. Somebody called me to tune into a radio broadcast this morning. And when I tuned in, these are the things that married men said were the problems they were having that were sending them outside for sex that was meant to be within the confines of their marriages. Number one, one of the husbands says that their wives don't know different skills when it comes to sex. Different skills. Don't worry, I'm tying it. <laughs> one said the wife prays too much and sometimes tells him she's fasting, so no sex. Some say they work in other towns and when they visit, their wife says they are going for all night program in church. Some say they are good. Their wives are good though, but they can't handle their demand alone. Some say their wives care more about their children than them. Some said when they want sex, their wives will say they have cooked, taken care of the children, so they are tired. Some say they, their wives don't dress well or they don't take care of themselves, so they are not attractive. Others say their wives say they have gone to work and they are tired, so can't do anything for them. Some say the young girls are beautiful and at their age, they need help. They need to help them gain sexual experience to prepare them for the future. As, that, as if that was not enough, driving to this place, I stumbled on today's newspaper. Divorce rates high in churches. All night services on the rise, but divorce rates high in churches. I needed to bring all this as my exhibit in this court that Jesus is sitting as the high judge. Are you guilty of any of those things those men say? And if you are one of those men that probably gave such as your response to why you're cheating, do you know one day you'll stand before the judgment seat of Christ to give account of your life? Life is not just about the gratification you get from whatever you're pursuing. Life is knowing that there is, one, there is a time coming where we will render account of what we did with our lives. Please, sex is something enjoyable. Women, sit up. Don't crowd your life. Don't manipulate. Don't disrespect. Men, don't also take your wives for granted. Talk more. Some of you have shut down because you have gone through so much injustice. But I think the season is now for you to open up. I need to end by saying we need to forgive one another. Whoever hasn't been satisfied enough and you've bottled up emotions because of that, please release the emotions and allow God come in. That is why we are here for you. Get on your uh, social media platform, please. Get us on Facebook. Get us on WhatsApp. Get us anywhere possible. Get us. Let us talk. We want to redeem the already broken down walls of the marriage institution. I want to pray with you. Because all said and done, without prayer, some of these mountains cannot be moved. We want godly marriages. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I pray first of all for my brothers and sisters who had messed up. They had gone outside. They are not only having sex in their marriages, they are committing adultery. And adultery is a sin against you. I ask that as many of them as are coming to you right now, they are sorry for what they have done, that they let there be mercy. Forgive them, oh God. And I pray for every marriage, every husband, every wife. Whatever issues they are having as it relates to sex in that marriage they are in, I pray for divine intervention. Help is already knocking on their doors. Help them to access help, oh God. Bring this help and let the story change. 
whoever right now is having an affair outside and they are finding it very difficult to break from those men or women they are entangled with. I release grace right now that Jehovah, you break them free. Thank you, Father, because I'm persuaded that a change has already come. In. Children are going to have better fathers and mothers. Husbands are going to have better wives. Wives are going to have better husbands. Thank you because you alone could have done this. I give you praise. I give you honor. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you very much for watching Families Together TV. It's been wonderful coming to your homes, wonderful coming to your offices. I'll be right back, same station, same time. But before I leave, I want to say a very big thank you to Jandel. They have made the set beautiful. My God, it makes me feel like this should be my bedroom. Jandel, thank you. May your business never see any form of dryness. And I want to say a very big thank you for pieces, clothes. Thank you for dressing me up and making me look beautiful. We appreciate you. But make sure you tune in same time next week. Until I'm, I come around again, stay in the comfort of God's love. And remember this one truth, that the expectation of the righteous shall never be cut off. Bye-bye. I will pursue, pursue, I'll follow through, because I realize it's all about you.